Have you heard the unbelievable true story of a former Olympic gold medalist who went from the podium to becoming a millionaire overnight? All thanks to a clever coupon loophole in America. It sounds wild but it's real. This is the incredible journey of a humble housewife and her neighbor, who spotted an opportunity and grabbed it with both hands, turning their lives in ways they could only have imagined. But as with every shortcut there was a price to pay. Join us as we explore this story. Please, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on more amazing recaps. The movie begins in Phoenix, Arizona, where a housewife Connie is arrested late one night at her home. As she surrenders peacefully, she flashes back to how it all started months ago. Connie, a former three-time gold medal-winning Olympic race walker, now lives an unremarkable life. Unlike other sports, race walking didn't make her rich nor famous. She shares her home with her husband, Rick, an IRS auditor, but their relationship has been strained since they struggled with infertility. They spent significant money on fertility treatments, but after Connie finally became pregnant, she tragically lost the baby. The heartbreak led Rick to take a traveling position at work, leaving him away for three weeks each month. When he was home, Rick was distant and critical. He blamed Connie for wasting their money on multiple fertility treatments and frequently mocked her for being unemployed. He also complained about her obsession with coupons, calling it a pointless hobby. But couponing had become more than just a hobby for Connie, it was her way of coping with the pain of losing her baby. She stockpiled groceries and other items, storing them in what was supposed to be the baby's nursery, filling the room to cover the baby wallpaper as a way to forget her loss. While Rick was away, Connie became close friends with her neighbor, Jojo, a fellow coupon enthusiast who also ran a YouTube channel offering savings tips. Jojo lived with her mother, Josie, and was struggling to find work after having her identity stolen. She sold makeup door-to-door -to, -door to make ends meet but had little success. In her free time she flirted with Earl the mailman, while bonding with Connie over their shared love of coupons. Whenever Connie visited the supermarket, she overwhelmed the cashier Greg with dozens of coupons. Her total would drop from over $100 to just $16, much to Greg's irritation. Connie prided herself on her motto. If you watch the pennies the dollars will take care of themselves. One afternoon while unpacking groceries, she became upset upon seeing the baby wallpaper, and impulsively ate a box of stale cereal in an attempt to ease her sadness. Frustrated by the stale food, Connie angrily wrote to the cereal company. To her surprise, a few days later, they sent her a coupon for free cereal as an apology. When Connie smugly returned to the store to redeem it, Greg told her that most companies would send free coupons to anyone who complained. Inspired by this, Connie began sending complaint letters to various manufacturers, even when there was nothing wrong with the product. Soon she was flooded with free coupons. Excited she showed her haul to Jojo, who was impressed by the strategy and even offered to buy a coupon from Connie, realizing it would still be cheaper than paying full price. This gave Connie an idea. She could sell the items she got for free, making a 100% profit. After doing some research online, Connie discovered that the coupons were printed in Mexico, not far from where they lived. She suggested to Jojo that they steal some to resell. Though skeptical at first, Jojo, who was drowning in debt, agrees to help. Meanwhile, in Nevada, loss prevention officer Ken was working at a local market when he encountered a fake coupon. Although the manager wanted to honor it for an elderly customer, Ken refused, believing that rules were rules. His rigid attitude earned him insults from the old lady and later, when asked to switch seats on a plane to help a nervous child, he coldly declined, lecturing the mother that the child needed to learn an important lesson. Arriving in Mexico, Connie and Jojo scouted the coupon factory, eventually approaching Alejandro and Rosa, a couple who worked there. The duo followed the couple home, and though Alejandro and Rosa initially thought they were about to be robbed, they welcomed Connie and Jojo after realizing they wanted to make a business proposition. Rosa was pregnant, and both she and Alejandro were struggling with low wages, so they agreed to help in exchange for a share of the profits. Alejandro worked in the printing section of the factory and Rosa in redemption, meaning they could smuggle out extra coupons that were supposed to be destroyed. These would be shipped to Connie and Jojo when distribution trucks crossed into the US. The plan was foolproof, at the border the boxes would just look like coupons. No evidence of illegal activity. A few days later, Connie and Jojo received their first shipment of coupons. They set up a simple website to sell them and promoted it on Connie's YouTube channel. The business quickly took off, earning them tons of money. But soon, supermarkets noticed the influx of fake coupons, and Ken received complaints from store managers about the financial losses they were suffering. Ken launched an investigation, spending 11 days tracking down a credit card used to make one of the fraudulent purchases. This led him to the website which featured Jojo promoting coupon sales. When Ken saw the site's motto, Connie's famous line, if you watch the pennies the dollars will take care of themselves, he knew he was onto something. Meanwhile, Connie and Jojo faced a problem when their PayPal account was frozen for receiving too much money too quickly. Desperate they contacted Tina, a hacker on the dark web, for help. 
Tina scolds them for being so reckless, as all the money could still be traced back to them. She instructed them to delete JoJo's YouTube videos and advised them to create a front business to launder their money. She also provided them with fake IDs, bank accounts, and a stash house, while warning them not to spend any money for six months to avoid detection. In exchange for her help, Tina demanded 10% of their profits. With Tina's guidance the scam continued to grow, becoming even more profitable. Ken, frustrated by the lack of progress, reported the case to the FBI, but they found the situation laughable and assigned it to Albert, their lowest-ranking desk worker. Six months later with the business thriving and no internet traces left for Ken to follow, Connie and Jojo were finally ready to start spending their money. But they remembered Tina's warning, they had to clean the dirty money first. As they brainstormed, Connie recalls a story her husband Rick told her about one of his clients. She realizes they could clean their illegal money by buying expensive items and reselling them later. With this strategy in mind, Connie and her partner in crime Jojo decide to take action. First, Connie visits several banks, convincing them to give them cash under the guise of needing it for her cosmetic business. With large sums of money in hand, Connie and Jojo embark on an extravagant shopping spree. They buy luxury sports cars, boats, a private plane and even guns, treating their newfound wealth as an opportunity to live the high life. Afterward, they take a trip to Las Vegas, where they discuss their future plans. Jojo is determined to pay off her mother's mortgage, while Connie reveals her desire to try fertility treatments once more. Meanwhile, Ken finally gets the call he's been waiting for from the FBI. Albert, the agent assigned to the case, informs Ken that all traces of the scam have been wiped from the internet, thanks to an expert hacker. However, since the fake coupons are being sent through traditional mail, Albert connects Ken with Simon, a postal inspector. Simon agrees to help and asks Ken to order some coupons from the website. When the envelope arrives a few days later, Simon immediately notices something suspicious. Although the envelope claims to be from Kansas, the postage stamp reveals it's actually from Arizona. With this new lead, Simon plans to fly to Phoenix, bringing Ken along due to his familiarity with the local supermarkets. Back in Phoenix, Connie makes an appointment at the fertility clinic, bringing Jojo for emotional support. She hasn't told Rick about her plans, and when the doctor informs her that this is her last chance to conceive, Connie decides to use a donor instead of her husband's sperm. Later that evening, Tina contacts the duo again to check on their financial situation. Tina is furious when she learns that Connie and Jojo have been spending their money on lavish items. She reminds them that by using Jojo's cosmetics brand as a front, they had already cleaned the money. Now, Tina tells them they need to sell everything they've purchased and gradually deposit the proceeds back into the bank in small amounts. When Rick returns from one of his frequent business trips, he notices the new TV Connie bought. She lies, telling him that she has a new sales job and no longer uses coupons, which pleases Rick. He even praises her, calling her his new wife, a comment that solidifies Connie's decision to go through with the fertility treatment using the donor's sperm. In the meantime, Ken and Simon intensify their investigation by interrogating cashiers in the area, asking if they've seen any customers with coupon obsessions. They finally strike gold when they speak with Greg, the supermarket cashier who often deals with Connie. Greg doesn't know her name, but he vividly remembers her and her peculiar motto. If you watch the pennies, the dollars will take care of themselves. Ken recognizes the motto from the scam website, giving them a good lead. The next day, Ken and Simon head to the local post office to see if any workers know anything about a coupon blonde. No one recognizes Connie, but they do remember that Earl is always watching Jojo's YouTube videos about saving tips. As for Connie and Jojo, they struggle to sell the vast number of luxury items they bought. Selling everything on eBay proves too difficult, so they try a different approach. While at a cafe, they meet two men from a gun club and decide to visit the club later to sell all the firearms they purchased. Jojo makes an impressive sales pitch, but the club's leader refuses to buy the guns. Desperate, they offer a steep discount which finally seals the deal. Back on the investigative side, Ken and Simon interrogate Earl in private. Earl denies knowing anything about the scam and after his release goes to Jojo's house, leaving her a note disguised as regular mail. Unfortunately for Earl, Ken and Simon have been following him, and now set up surveillance outside Jojo's home. Later that night Jojo comes home, unaware that she's being watched. To celebrate the big gun sale she made earlier, Jojo dances in her driveway, completely oblivious to the two men watching her. The following morning, Jojo is distracted by an argument with her mother, Josie, and doesn't check her mail. She heads to the stash house as usual, with Ken and Simon tailing her. Once there they spot Connie, realizing she's the blonde from Greg's description. With this new information, Simon gathers a team of postal inspectors to officially begin their operation. By now, they have enough evidence to uncover Connie and Jojo's true identities, and when they show Greg a picture he confirms it. That night, Jojo finally discovers Earl's note warning her to leave town, but it's too late. Simon and his team raid Connie and Jojo's homes, arresting both women and Josie too. Their arrests make the evening news, shocking Earl when he sees Jojo's face on TV. 
During interrogation, Rick and Josie quickly cooperate with authorities, denying any involvement in the scam. Jojo tries to play innocent, but the investigators have already found incriminating videos on her computer. Connie on the other hand confesses to her crimes but is shocked to learn that they could face 40 years to life in prison for fraud. In a moment of desperation, Connie offers to take full responsibility in exchange for a lighter sentence for Jojo. The authorities agree and Jojo is released on bail. Jojo was surprised to know who posted her bail. It was Earl. Rick also visits Connie in jail, but instead of offering support, he scolds her and refuses to pay her bail. Heartbroken, Connie asks for a divorce. Meanwhile investigators trace the coupon scam back to Alejandro and Rosa, the couple who helped them in Mexico. However by the time authorities figure this out the couple has already fled, and the Mexican government has no interest in pursuing them. Connie is able to hire an expensive lawyer, a decision that pays off. During the trial, her lawyer argues that Connie and Jojo merely exploited a loophole, just like large corporations do. His defense works, and Jojo is sentenced to only 10 days in jail and a year of probation, while Connie receives 11 months in prison with the possibility of parole. Although Ken and Simon are frustrated by the lenient sentences, they are told by the state attorney that the brands affected by the scam are pressured for leniency to avoid bad press. For these megacorporations, the $80 million lost in the scam was merely a drop in the bucket. With the case now closed, Simon prepares to move on, but before leaving he compliments Ken calling him a good man and expressing his pleasure in working with him. However, Simon also advises Ken to tone down his attitude a bit. As time passes, everyone's lives take new directions. Ken softens up becoming more lenient with longtime customers who use fake coupons, and even finds the courage to create a profile on a dating app. Connie successfully gets the divorce she wanted, and her fertility treatment proves to be a success. She spends her months in prison visibly pregnant, as the authorities seize most of the money they earned from the scam. Fortunately for her, they overlook the boxes in the nursery, mistaking them for food, when in reality, they contain hidden cash. Jojo manages to retrieve the boxes, knowing that Connie had stashed the money there all along. After reuniting with Earl, Jojo and he relocate to Montenegro, a country without extradition laws. There they plan to launch another scam under a new cosmetics brand, waiting for Connie to join them once she's released, so they can resume their scheming together.